Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today for our talk on building an analytic extension to MySQL with ClickHouse and open source. My name is Kirsten Foon and I'm part of the marketing team here at Percona. Today I'm joined by our CTO, Vadim Tuchenko, and Altinity's developer advocate, Kanti Subramanian, I, who are they're gonna discuss how ClickHouse's unique capabilities can give your MySQL database a little help to maximize its full potential. Before we get started though, we do have a few housekeeping notes to go over. All lines are on mute for the duration of this call. Questions can be submitted at any time through the Q&A widget on your console. We'll get to as many questions as we can at the end of the session. And for those that we can't answer, we will create a blog post to address them. The session is being recorded and will be available for replay afterwards along with the slides. So with that, I'll let Vadim kick things off. Over to you, Vadim. Oh, thank you, Kirsten. Do you hear me okay? Perfectly fine. Here All right, go. yeah, let's uh, proceed. So. Today, we wanted to talk about combining uh, MySQL and uh, ClickHouse products and the building a pipeline between them. And uh, before we jump uh, into that, uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, MySQL. And I guess if you attend the Percona webinar, you probably know what uh, MySQL is. Uh, but uh, if not, or if you just uh, randomly found this video on the internet, I will do a quick introduction about in, into what a MySQL is and uh, what are strengths and the weaknesses and why would we want to combine it with analytical solution like uh, ClickHouse. So uh, in Percona, we see MySQL being uh, uh, strong in OLTP or we name it operational databases. And uh, uh, from a high level of view, uh, that's uh, uh, databases that can, can handle thousands of uh, concurrent transactions uh, uh, at the same time, and uh, maybe handles up to 1 million transactions uh, uh, per second. And uh, uh, operational databases comes with uh, uh, strong areas, like they support uh, AC transactional, uh, they support excellent uh, concurrency. Uh, they typically very fast for point lookups and very short uh, 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 short transaction. Sort of short by short transaction, I mean, if you, for example, visit a web page and you typically don't want to wait uh, uh, one second or even half a second, that will, will be too long or you may go wander to different website. So, uh, with MySQL and the operational databases, we target a very fast, uh, very quick uh, transaction and uh, response time. So uh, MySQL comes with uh, Excel uh, as excellent for building this uh, online transactional uh, application. And uh, we see MySQL being used uh, widely in, uh, for example, e-commerce website when you go and uh, do some shopping, online gaming. We know that uh, MySQL is powered by uh, 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 very uh, popular, uh, very uh, high concurrent uh, online games. If you uh, have your favorite uh, online game in mind, very high probability it is running MySQL somewhere in the back end. And also for uh, social networks, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter being most popular, they are built uh, on uh, MySQL as a front-end. Uh, however, when it comes to analytical, if you want to run an analytical query in MySQL, is uh, where it is uh, problematic. And uh, you can, uh, you still can do uh, analytical query with MySQL. If you can run a SQL query, MySQL will accept it if it's a valid SQL query. But uh, typically, typically, we recommend it to run only for, 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 only for very small uh, data sets. Uh, and aggregation queries, aggregation queries, I mean, if you do some filtering uh, group by averaging uh, or finding minimal maximum values and uh, tables with, uh, say, 10 million rows, uh, that uh, can be very, uh, very problematic for uh, MySQL. So that's uh, not, uh, not very, uh, not very good uh, use case for MySQL. And uh, let me show some examples uh, uh, with some experiments uh, we did. 
And uh, one of uh, my favorite data sets is the uh, airline uh, uh, delays uh, data set. My favorite, because it's uh, first of all, it's big and second, uh, it is available for everybody to download uh, and play with thanks for Department of Transportation of the uh, United States. So for example, we took uh, uh, this query and the data set uh, contained 176 million probes. And we just run basic, uh, very basic aggregation query, for example, to find the count of uh, uh, delays, uh, uh, count of uh, 15 minutes or more delays between years 2000 and 2008. And uh, you see to process this query, MySQL actually takes nine minutes and seven seconds, while uh, the same query in Kikaos would uh, give you answer in uh, just a uh, half, half a second. And uh, another query, just uh, for uh, comparison, there is no, we don't even run filtering, there is we do uh, a group by aggregation, we uh, uh, trying to find average of uh, uh, delays and uh, uh, ordering by a year. And again, in my scale, this query takes uh, four minutes to execute and in, in ClickHouse, it is uh, less, uh, less uh, uh, than uh, uh, one second. So let's uh, talk uh, about what uh, gives such a big uh, difference. And uh, it comes to architectural differences on uh, how you store your data and how you organize your data. MySQL and uh, um, many, again, operational databases they store data in the uh, rows. And the MySQL typically handle your query in a single thread. One user comes and uh, execute query and the MySQL allocates only one thread on, on one CPU to this user. So you using one CPU to execute query, but uh, it gives you optimization for, for high concurrency. At the same time, if you give only one CPU for user, and you have multiple CPUs and multiple users come at the same time, they uh, will be able to execute queries uh, in a, a high concurrent uh, uh, fashion. And uh, this uh, uh, feature, this architectural uh, decision inside MySQL is actually limiting factors for, to run analytical uh, uh, queries. And uh, that's uh, where ClickHouse uh, takes a different uh, approach for analytical processing. So ClickHouse stores data in columns, not in rows. Uh, ClickHouse comes with optimization to minimize IO uh, between uh, the memory and the storage. storage. And uh, uh, actually it can uh, run the single query in parallel as a, a counter example to previous MySQL case, if a single user comes and execute uh, one query, actually ClickHouse can use multiple uh, CPUs, four, eight, 16 C CPUs to execute a single query. That's why it uh, can produce a result uh, uh, very fast. And the next uh, diagram, uh, just to, to again to show uh, difference between uh, 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 row storage and the column storage. Uh, uh, row storage uh, is a MySQL way. And if you need uh, to read uh, only partial data, MySQL still will read the whole row. The difference uh, is uh, ClickHouse, if you need to read only one column uh, for your query, ClickHouse will be able to minimize amount of data to uh, uh, to process. And uh, this uh, uh, to mm, dig into this uh, example into further. For example, in this example, if we have some hypothetical query and uh, we need to read all columns for this all columns for this query, MySQL will might need to process. 100% of data. In this case, for example, let's assume we have 
59 uh, gigab gigabits, uh, gigabytes of data. So MySQL will read all the data, will uh, uh, use uh, processing and uh, I.O. power to bring uh, that uh, data all 60 gigabyte from storage uh, to, to, to memory and process all the data. Uh, for uh, click house, uh, it is uh, different. We can see, so for example, if we need to read only three columns and uh, these three columns uh, might be actually taking only 3% of that occupied space. If we will need to read only 1.7 gigabytes of data. And uh, moreover, uh, 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 click house is very efficient in the compression data. So on the storage, it uh, will take even less space, 21 megabytes. So it will take even less efforts to bring all the data from storage to memory. And again, ClickHouse can read, can do all this work in parallel. For example, if you ClickHouse will use eight uh, CPUs, uh, each CPU will do this work in parallel to bring only 2.6 megabyte of data from the storage uh, into memory. And, uh, uh, but uh, you can see uh, that uh, one database actually cannot replace another. Each of them has drawbacks and uh, benefits. And uh, this is where we see synergy or uh, 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 complement uh, products where MySQL can, can work in uh, unison with ClickHouse. So uh, MySQL is very good in transactional processing and the fast single uh, row updates. While ClickHouse limitation, uh, ClickHouse actually does not support uh, transactions. Updating row can be very problematic. ClickHouse still will need to read the uh, data and uh, update a lot of data just to update a single, single uh, row. And the uh, deletes uh, also very problematic on ClickHouse. It uh, acts mostly in app, uh, uh, up and only way. MySQL uh, supports very high concurrency. Uh, multiple users uh, can come and execute queries against a uh, single MySQL instance. But uh, ClickHouse, as we just uh, recently discussed, can uh, use a lot of resources for single user. So ClickHouse might struggle to execute the same workload under concurrent uh, access. That's why uh, we mm, think of combining two uh, uh, systems and finding a way shipping data from MySQL to ClickHouse will benefit uh, MySQL users by provide, providing them uh, analytical extensions to be able to execute uh, uh, analytical queries much faster. And uh, here I will pass uh, mm, uh, slides uh, to Kanti and the uh, Kanti We'll talk how we can uh, build uh, the system uh, for uh, MySQL and ClickHouse uh, to work together. All right, thanks, Vadim. Okay. Uh, can you guys hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, yeah, so um, Thanks again, Vadim, for talking about uh, some of the benefits of ClickHouse as an analytical database uh, and uh, where uh, MySQL kind of struggles. Um, and so I'm going to talk about um, some of our experience in actually transferring data from MySQL into ClickHouse and um, just uh, some of the tools that we've actually developed uh, to uh, perform the transfer and uh, kind of making a data engineer or a DBA's job easier in maintaining that pipeline. Um, so let's assume that uh, you've decided to migrate the data into ClickHouse. Um, one of the first steps you would try to do is you want to identify the tables and the databases in MySQL that you want uh, to be replicated into ClickHouse. Um, and then, um, you know, so one of the solutions we've developed is uh, called the ClickHouse Sync Connector. Uh, which is actually based on the Kafka Connect framework. Uh, and so it uh, basically just 
connects to your MySQL database using Debezium library. Um, and then um, Debezium internally uses uh, a library called MySQL bin log reader, which uh, reads uh, all the changes from the bin log. And then uh, we use the ClickHouse JDBC library uh, to actually write data into ClickHouse. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the overall architecture um, of transferring data using um, the sync connector. Um, so there is a reason you might want to do the initial dump and load separately. Uh, I'll talk about that in the next slides. Um, one thing uh, to notice is we um, definitely suggest using a replacing merge tree uh, because we have um, logic to support updates and deletes uh, in ClickHouse uh, using a replacing merge tree. So next slide. Um, so yeah, so one of the uh, uh, the way you can actually go about setting up replication is uh, the first step is you want to do an initial dump and load. Um, uh, the main reason is uh, Debezium is single threaded. It uses the MySQL uh, bin log library and it does a sequential re read. And so if you have data sitting in MySQL uh, that's got millions of rows, uh, your initial snapshot, as they call it, Debezium, might actually be slower. Uh, so you want to look at other solutions that uh, might do that initial transfer uh, faster. Um, and you might need a solution that validates the data. Uh, like doing a quick count check is good, but then it's not going to uh, tell you if the data was copied properly. Uh, so we'll talk about some tools that actually helps you validate the data. And then the last step is to actually set up a change data capture application. So every change that happens in MySQL would automatically get replicated into uh, ClickUps. Um, so the first thing is, yeah, why do we need custom load dump and tools? Um, MySQL and ClickHouse are very similar in the SQL compliance. Um, you, you can actually copy a lot of queries and then execute it directly on ClickHouse. Uh, but there are differences in data types. There are differences in the actual data limits. Um, so that's one big reason why uh, we actually developed a tool. Because for example, if you look at the date column, uh, the maximum in MySQL the year is 9,999 and ClickHouse it's 2299. So if you actually try to insert a row with 9,000, um, you're going to get an error uh, trying to insert it into ClickHouse. Uh, the other thing the tool actually does is it reads your schema. Um, uh, for example, it reads the primary key of your MySQL, create table syntax, and then um, uh, transforms it into a, an order by an replacing much tree and click outs. Um, so that um, so that's something that you can uh, it, that's something that's automated uh, you don't have to do it manually um, and the other reason is uh, you definitely want something that's faster and, and reliable in doing the initial transfer um, this is just a comparison of um, the existing tools uh, that can uh, dump the data from MySQL um, so there's MySQL dump, MySQL, uh, my dumper, and MySQL shell. And as you can see, MySQL shell is way faster and, and throughput uh, compared to the other tools. Um, so yeah, so our suggested way of doing initial transfer is to use uh, MySQL shell uh, to uh, dump the data from MySQL into SQL files. And then we, uh, we have a tool that wraps up ClickHouse client. Um, and then which can read the SQL files, uh, map the schema into replacing merge tree tables in ClickHouse, and then add the version of the signed columns that are required for updates and deletes. Um, yeah, so this is just how you would run the MySQL shell command to dump the tables. Uh, you can filter by databases and tables, and this is the tool that uh, you can use to load the, da the data into ClickHouse. Um, yeah, as I uh, mentioned before, uh, you'll see that uh, th this is the, the create table on the right is the ClickHouse automatically created 
table syntax. Um, as you can see, it is just assigned in the version column that's required for replacing merge tree. And then it automatically picks the employee number, uh, which is a primary key from MySQL, and uh, populates it in the order by column in, uh, in ClickHouse. Um, so the next step by, uh, is validating data. Uh, as you know, a basic count check is not enough. Uh, so we, uh, we developed an, a tool which, uh, which actually calculates the checksum um, between MySQL and uh, ClickHouse data, and uh, and uh, you can actually use that tool to make sure your data was copied over correctly. Um, obviously, it uh, uh, makes sure that uh, the, the logic is, uh, because as I mentioned before, the date limit on on MySQL would be 9,000 and ClickHouse would be 2299, so it actually makes sure that that logic is built in. Um, so yeah, and then after that's done, um, you can actually change the sync connector uh, to start off from a certain position in the bin log um, and then start uh, set up the CDC. So as you get events in uh, MySQL, it'll automatically get replicated at ClickHouse. Um, yeah, so this is how you, you could actually use a sync connector. Uh, we have Docker, Docker images. You could uh, just use it as a jar file. Um, and you can, we also have Helm charts, uh, so you can actually deploy it on Kubernetes. Um, so this is another uh, kind of application we've been working on in the last few months, um, is um, with the Kafka Connect framework, uh, there's a lot of services that you have to deploy. So there's uh, uh, the, the division process, um, the actual Kafka itself, uh, which is not very easy in maintaining. Um, and then uh, you have the sync connector. Um, so we, uh, so this is is a more simplified application. It's it's just one executable. Um, it's one uh, service uh, in Kubernetes. Um, so what how it actually works is uh, it uses the Debian library. Uh, and uh, we at Alternity also contribute to Debezium. Um, so it uses the Debezium library to read the bin log from MySQL. It uses a, a sync connector library uh, to transform those messages that we get from Debezium into uh, ClickHouse JDBC statements. And then it inserts uh, the records into ClickHouse as a batch. Um, uh, I'll just tell, um, in the next slides, I'll talk about uh, why this architecture is uh, is useful, um, especially when uh, we have to support uh, DDLs. Uh, so yeah, so this is just our inbuilt Grafana dashboard that might be useful, um, especially after you've deployed the pipeline and if you uh, want to monitor the pipeline, um, especially when there are errors in transforming data uh, or uh, you want to look at CPU and memory stats and uh, yeah, and take action if something goes wrong. Um, I'm going to skip through these slides really quick. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the altered table support that we've uh, been working on uh, in the last couple of months. Um, and so this is one of the uh, problems with the Kafka Connect framework is, and Debezium is uh, the DDLs in Kafka Connect actually comes in as a separate topic. Um, so when you are consuming records from Kafka, uh, so the, in this example, you have an update employees and then you have a truncate employees. Um, obviously, if you read this out of order, you're going to be truncating the employees first and then trying to update employees, which is going to break your pipeline. Um, so with uh, with our new architecture, uh, which does not have Kafka, uh, we can actually read these records in sequence. And, and so by doing that, we can make sure we actually write these events in sequence. Um, 
Um, so I'm gonna do a quick de demo on uh, how that's done. Let me share my screen. Um, so when I was talking about, uh, you guys see my screen? Yep, you're good. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, um, so the simplified architecture also makes it easy uh, in uh, kind of defining your configuration. It's just one configuration file. Um, you define the source database, um, uh, the Azure URL, the port, username, password. D uh, you uh, define the Azure databases you want to include in the replication. You can you can do table filters, um, and then you uh, define the ClickOS destination configuration. Um, uh, these are some of the ones that we use in Sync Connector, for example. If you set this, it'll automatically create the tables if it doesn't exist in ClickHouse. Um, and then just to click on this information. So let me start the um, demo. Um, so this one, um, it just launches um, MySQL. One second, let me. I might have another process running. I'm gonna quickly stop that. Okay, so it's got. So we have my SQL running. Um, and we have click I was trying uh, just gonna quickly Let's just do the same thing for uh, ClickHouse. Okay, so, uh, so we're trying to replicate the employees table. Data is already there in MySQL. Let's just do a quick count of employees. So it's about 300,000 records. Uh, we don't have the tables in uh, ClickHouse. I'm going to start the replication. So, yeah, you'll see that um, replication tool automatically creates the data, uh, the tables. Uh, so just to, so you see that departments was created um, and then employees was created. Uh, so let's quickly check the employees schema. Yeah, so let's sign in the version column. Let's go to the crazy must tree. Um, and the, so we have uh, Primary key mapped into the uh, primary key in the house. All right, so now um, let's just do a quick count check. Make sure we've got all the data. Yeah, so that matches my SQL. Um, and now I'm going to quickly just talk about one functionality of the replication tool. Um, um, and yeah, so I to kind of hammer on uh, the date limits. So, see this record, uh, the MySQL maximum uh, 
date is 9999. If you run the same thing in ClickOS, uh, you'll see that it uh, uh, the, the replication tool or the sync connector uh, maps it to the uh, to the my ClickOS maximum value. Um, so let's just try to run a couple of alter commands. Uh, um, so yeah, so let's try to add a new column, employee address. Um, it's it's a null um, constraint, and we, we're going to try to add it after first name. So before that, let's just check. So, yeah, so now that we are in MySQL, let's. Uh, okay, so now it's added in um, ClickHouse, and you see that uh, the tool actually reads the null constraint and it maps it, it into a, a nullable uh, syntax in ClickHouse. And uh, you can also see that uh, we map the data types uh, from MySQL into. Uh, corresponding click of data types. Um, so that was a simple add column. I'm gonna quickly. Um, yeah, we can do uh, modify column. Um, in this case, uh, because it maps into a string, uh, there's no there's no difference in, in click outs. Um, just one last. Uh, example of uh, how we handle uh, DDLs and, and DMLs together. Um, so let's take this record uh, in the employees table um, and let's try to execute uh, this syntax, uh, this uh, SQL statement. So the first part, it actually tries to rename the table from employees to employees old. And the second part, it, it updates employees old and uh, sets the address uh, column. Uh, so I, as I talked about in the previous slides, uh, we definitely want to guarantee the order if, uh, obviously, if you try to update employees old and then rename the table, it, it's not going to work. Uh, Let's run this and just make sure. Perfect. So you see that uh, the replication tool uh, ran these statements in the specific order. So the employees table was renamed into employees old. And let's just run the same query again. Uh, oh, because. Uh, in the table, so I have to change the table name. Perfect. So yeah, so this is, so you see the updated record. Um, so you, because it's a replacing merge tree, uh, we can force the merging process by passing the final keyword. And then, so now we have uh, the updated column. Just Confirm. Let's just run that same query in MySQL. All right, perfect. Um, that's um, so. Yeah, I just want to quickly also talk about Postgres. Uh, for, with this tool, we also support Postgres. Um, it's uh, let me just get out of this. Um, Postgres, it's, uh, it's again a very simplified configuration. Uh, you would uh, ask the Postgres database information um, and then uh, include, again, same thing as MySQL, pass in the database, uh, pass the, uh, if you want to filter certain tables, you would pass that here um, and then provide the details information. Um, so maybe just quickly, I can. Run the Postgres example. Let's 
So let's um, we created a simple table called PM. Uh, let's do a quick count check. Uh, Records. Um, we have records here on the last half of the application. So we have created and simply. Um, yeah, so you'll see that uh, the data was created, um, and uh, and you can see uh, we actually map uh, the data types from Postgres into ClickUps. Um, uh, for example, the UUID is uh, mapped into ClickUps UUID. Uh, we have some JSON columns which we map into strings uh, for JSON B, uh, and then the timestamp with time zone. Columns are mapped into data. All right, I'm going to go back to the slide. Right, let's skip these ones. Yeah, so um, we have um, um, the Trick Sync Connector is an open source project. Uh, you can take a look, uh, you can try it out. Uh, the new tool that the simplified uh, tool is uh, something we plan to open source in the next few weeks. Uh, so please reach out to us uh, if, you, uh, if you're interested. Um, and uh, in terms of the roadmap, uh, we actually do have Postgres support. Uh, we're planning to get into Mongo and SQL Server. And the next biggest thing is we're planning to support transactions. All right, uh, that's about it. And thank you. Thanks, Kanji. Thanks, Vadim. There are a few questions that have come through, so I'll go through them in order um, as they came in. So first one came in is, is ClickHouse an open source, and what kind of licenses do you have? Uh, ClickHouse is uh, Apache licensed, so it is open source. Great. Thank you. Uh, and I think some of these came through as you were doing your demo, so you may have to think back a little bit. But is Batch insert size configure the considerations for how many rows are batched together. Uh, yes, it is a configuration parameter um, uh, that you can actually define. Um, so, we, yeah, so it clickers actually works better if you insert records in bigger batches. Um, uh, so there is no kind of perfect parameter. It's something that you should probably tune in. Come up with the correct parameter, correct value. I uh, just wanted to answer one last. I think there was a, another part part to the first question uh, about database as a service for ClickHouse. Um, alternately, uh, as a database as a service offering for ClickHouse, it's called Alternative Cloud. Um, so yeah, so that's one option. Uh, there's another one offered by ClickHouse Inc. It's called ClickHouse Cloud. Uh, there are other companies that offer uh, databases. So All right. Uh, the final keyword will eventually add a significant performance penalty to select queries. Is that correct? Um, it, so I, I think it, it does, but it also, like, 
it depends on how your table is structured. Uh, you might want to think of partitioning it properly. Um, and so if it's partitioned properly, it will definitely, uh, uh, the performance impact shouldn't uh, be that much. Uh, it, it's actually, it really depends on how your schema is defined. Um, your examples show queries in one table. What if you need more complex queries with joins or over tables? Um, so, yeah, when uh, when you're doing DML, uh, uh, it, the joins will work. Uh, uh, DDL um, across uh, like the dependencies between tables on DDLs is something we haven't tested, but uh, DMLs should work out of the box. Okay. Uh, does ClickHouse work with Nginx? Um, yeah, it'll be good if there's some context on how they plan to use Nginx uh, with ClickHouse. Uh, if I, there is an article that I if I, I would think the question is about maybe using that as a load balancer in front of a ClickHouse cluster, um, I can get back. I, I, we have, I think we have an article in Alterity's knowledge base on how we can do that. So I can send a link. Great, thank you. Are there restrictions migrating from RDS to ClickHouse? Um, yeah, so some of the restrictions are um, uh, transaction support is currently not there. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, um, the other thing is uh, the indexes are not the same. So if you're trying to do a, an add index in MySQL, uh, or if you're trying to add a primary key, uh, it's not something that can be translated directly into ClickHouse. Uh, because you cannot really change a primary key uh, in ClickHouse. Uh, and the the indexes are different uh, because ClickHouse doesn't use B trees for indexing. Uh, it uses sparse indexing. So the, the type of indexes are actually different. It uses min max uh, and bloom filter type of indexes. Uh, so that requires some manual intervention. Uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, 95% of the use cases should be covered out of the box. All right, and are there some best practices about data model design in ClickHouse? Um, yes, there are. We definitely have a knowledge base uh, that talks about uh, best practices, and, uh, if, especially if you're coming from a, a relational database. Uh, there, are, there are good suggestions on how you can model your ClickHouse table. Uh, I can share the link later. Perfect. Thank you. Give it a few more seconds to see if there's any other questions that might have come through. All right. It looks like that might be it. So thanks, Vadim. Oh, see, I always do. I do it. I do it. I thank you. And then another question pops through. So, uh, does the data model in ClickHouse have to follow MySQL schema one to one, or is it possible to transform the data when migrating to CH to ClickHouse? Um, so, with the uh, with the replication tool, uh, you would want to keep the column names and the C and the schema the same. Um, so one suggestion is maybe you could use that as your uh, landing zone or staging area in ClickHouse, and then you could have other fact dim tables or dimension tables that derive from your staging table. Um, and, and you could have an ETL process that that does the transformation. So it, it's really up to your use case. Uh, but for replication, you definitely need the schema to be the same.
Well, with that, if anybody has any additional questions for either Kanti or Vadim, you can visit us on the either website, alternity.com or kahona.com. You can uh, put questions through the contact sections there. Um, and there's one more that felt came through. It would be interesting to have an in-depth approach about avoiding performance bottlenecks in ClickHouse. It's just a final comment uh, there and it's something to think about. Um, yes, uh, yeah, we do have um, uh, Robert Rogers, our CEO, does uh, webinars. Um, I think there was one you did in the past uh, covering replicated merge tree uh, and uh, using the final keyword. Uh, I can share the link of the, of that webinar. There are definitely good practices on how you can do it in an efficient way. Perfect. Thank you. So with that, I'll end the session. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you again, Kanti and Vidim, for your uh, insights. And hopefully, we'll see everybody at another one of our sessions in the later on in the year. Other than that, have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thanks,